Hi, I'm Lou and today I'm going to show you how to do basic house wiring. Let's take a look at the typical parts we'll use. We have outlets and switches and the plates and boxes that go with them. This round box is for light fixtures. We're going to use 12 gauge wire which is good for all outlets and lights. We'll need a hammer, knife, screwdriver, wire strippers, wire nuts, and a nightlight for testing. Let's see the tools in action with this outlet. Carefully slit the covering of the wire right down the middle approximately 6 inches long. Peel back all the paper and plastic and cut it off. Use the 12 gauge hole and strip off 3 quarters of an inch of insulation. Using the hole right here, bend a hook in the end of each wire. Punch out one of your knockouts. Feed your wire into the box. Hook the black wire to one of the brass screws like this and tighten it down. The white wire goes to the silver screw and the bare copper wire goes to the green screw. Bend these wires right here and then again right there and tuck it into the box. Screw these down, put it on the cover plate and screw it down. And there it is all done. Let's take a closer look at these wires. Black is the source, much like a faucet. White is a drain, much like a drain. And the copper is an overflow drain in case that ever fails. Now suppose we want to make a switched outlet. Power comes in this way. You always switch the black source wire here. To connect the white wires, you put together with a wire nut like this. The source ground wire goes to the grounding lug of the switch and the one from the outlet just wraps around it like this. Of course, each of these will be in their own boxes. These will be farther apart and these will all be encased in this yellow sheathing. Wired up, it works like this. So when do we use these extra screws? Outlets are all chained together, typically about eight feet apart around the room. Power comes in on this side and you simply connect black to brass all the way down white to silver all the way down, and chain your grounds together. When you're done, you should be getting power in every outlet. Now let's look at GFCI outlets. Power comes in from this side, and these are required at the start of the chain in kitchens and bathrooms for extra protection from water. This is basically a little circuit breaker. They are wired the same as in regular outlets, black to brass, white to silver, and the ground to the green lug. The only thing you have to make sure of is that the line or power comes in where it says line and the load, which is the outlets, are on that end. Here we are powered up. There's the circuit blown and then you can reset it here. Wiring light fixtures is much like wiring outlets except you use a round box instead of a square one and instead of attaching black, white, and ground with screws, you attach black, white, and ground with wire nuts. Next, you install this cross bracket with metal studs right here. Line up these two holes with the studs and hold it on with these caps. Give it power through a switch and we have light. Ceiling fans are actually very similar to lights. Since ceiling fans are so heavy, you have to use the special box with the bracket on the back. There's also special ceiling fan wire that has the white, black, and copper that we're used to but adds this new red wire. You wire black to black, and that controls your light. Red to blue, and that controls the fan motor. The white wires are drain, and green to ground. On the other end of this wire, the black and red go to two switches so you can control the fan and light separately. Like this. There's a mounting harness that comes with the fan that attaches it to the box. Now we'll talk about three-way switches, and I'm sorry, but this will make your head hurt. These are the ones that allow you to turn the lights on here and off there. First, we'll talk about how to wire the two switches together. We'll use this same ceiling fan or three-way wire that has white, red, copper, and black all in the same sheath. We do black to brass on this side, red to brass on this side, green to ground down the middle, the white wire is connected to wire nuts. We attach our outlet or light fixture to this end with the black wire coming from the brass over to the black screw here, and the white wire going to the wire nut, and the ground wire going from green to wrap on this green. 
Down on this end where the power comes in, we have black to the black screw, white to the wire nut, and ground twisted to the green ground line. Powered up, we can turn our light on with this switch and off with this switch. Now let's see how to install electrical boxes. There's two kinds. This is called a new work box, which goes right to a stud. And this is an old work box that goes in after drywall. The new work box is super easy. You just take those tabs, push them up against the stud like this, and hammer it in. Before you install an old work box, make sure you're not right on top of a stud. And a great way to do that is to search for drywall screws. They'll be covered with mud so you can't see them, but a magnet will still stick to them. Place the box against the wall and trace around the outside edges. Next, we need to cut this out. We can use a knife, but if you're going to be doing a lot of them, buy a drywall saw. We'll stick this in and tighten these screws, which causes these wings to pop up and then pull back and tighten it against the drywall. And there it is, solid as can be. At some point, you're probably going to have to run wires through studs, and you do that by drilling a hole in there. But make sure you go right in the center so that the drywall screws can't reach in and hit it. Last, we'll look at how to wire into a circuit breaker box, and we'll start by removing these four screws. Always make sure the main power to the box is shut off before you work in it. All your house wiring comes in here from the top. The copper wires go over here to the grounding bar. The white wires go over to this other grounding bar. And as you can see, these two bars are actually connected by that black strap across the back. The black source wires go around and go right into all these breakers. A circuit breaker is like a switch that shuts itself off when there's trouble. This connects to the power bar in the back of the breaker box. Your black power wire goes under this lug and you tighten it down with a screwdriver. We use a 20 amp breaker with our 12 gauge wire and you can put up to 10 lights and outlets on this circuit. You add new breakers by putting them in at an angle and shoving down here. This turns on the power to the circuit. Thanks for watching and good luck with your electrical wiring.